Hey guys, Wildox Studios here, and today's video comes in lieu of a question um, from the Discord where one of the Oculus Start members was asking, How did I get a Metafork branch over into my downstream Unreal Engine branch alongside the other uh, default Epic? branches and tags um so it, it it came out of the fact that the one of the members noticed that i added this on the heels of the api update um where you now have to add this metadata to your android build uh in order to get past the api upload checks um for quest uploads but um that aside um, I apologize if I'm assuming that you guys don't know how this works. Like, I, I don't want to come off that way, but just to give a foundation, when you create a fork of a branch upstream, it's going to create, it's going to give you two options. You can either fork the main branch or you can fork all of the branches and tags at that point in time. And I say at that point in time, because it's not going to like backfill new branches as your upstream fork or your upstream repo starts to create new ones. Um, for instance, uh, there's a dev, a 5.5-dev five, five dev branch that's been created upstream. I don't have it. So, like, as those things come in, I'll have to run the, you know, basically the git pull from upstream and then git push uh, dash u to create the branch on my fork. Um, but the other thing I want to show you is that, like, if you're looking at you know a branch that's downstream you're gonna fall behind the upstream repo so like my five five which is just a dash u it's a copy of the upstream it's gonna fall behind and you'll get the sync fork here and it'll be like hey do you want to update your branch and you can do this from the web ui um you can do this from other tool sets but it's really easy to do this from the web ui the thing that I want to make note of here is that Git's web UI doesn't really support multiple downstream branches that are across forks. So one thing is you can't like have a, an Oculus repo fort and then an Unreal Engine repo fort. I, I think if I remember correctly, you can't do that. Um, the other thing is like, I wanted to do diffs between the metafork and unreal engine. Um, and then also my custom branches. And the only way to do that is to have everything in a single, uh, repo. So that was my reasoning behind this. Um, you can diff across them. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, uh, let's see if I can figure out, how, like, I can show you how that's done. Um, so one, you can use a utility, like a diff utility in Visual Studio Code, and we'll dive into VS Code here in a second. Um, but you can, like, if you see here, if I was to sync fork, it would sync against release right here. The web UI is not really that great. This would be detrimental to this branch, by the way. It would, it would totally destroy it if I did this. So be careful with that. But if you click on this, 72 commits ahead of what you can do. And I'll just go to the one that I know isn't changed real quick. So if I go to this meta branch here, which is just a copy of 427 essentially, and I click on this 50 commits head, I can hit a drop down. I can come down to Oculus's branch, uh, their branch. Man, these forks and branches are gonna kill me from a word standpoint. <laughs> but I can come to Oculus's repo then I can go to 427 um, and then I can do a direct comparison against my branch that's in my Unreal Engine repo and you can see there's nothing to compare. So there is ways to do this comparison across forks. Um, for whatever reason, even whenever you set your upstream, it does. it's not smart enough, the web UI isn't, to know that like I shouldn't be looking at the release or what it's considered to be the default of the upstream repo. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, so yeah, we'll dive into uh, Visual Studio Code now. 
Uh, so I, you, go grab it. It's free. When you're doing your install, be sure to um, check the options to add the context for Open With Code. It's a lovely feature. Gets you right where you need to go really fast. And then also, don't struggle with the built-in PowerShell of Windows 10 or Windows 11. Go grab PWSH. It's also free and it's lovely. So um, when you open up a brand new folder, like you just right click, create a folder, and then you would right click that folder and open with code, you're gonna have an empty directory. Nothing's there. If you run the command git init, it's gonna initialize a local repo, not with anything behind it, like this URL string, just the words git init, and you hit enter, it's gonna initialize an empty repo. At that point, it's gonna be ready for you to add remote sources. So if I go up in my history here, you'll see that like, I'll have a like get a uh, remote add ep uh, epic upstream. That epic upstream is the name I gave to that git link to say this is my upstream Unreal Engine uh, repo. Then you'll run a set upstream on each individual branch so it knows what your upstream is. Um, and a good way for me to show that is to do like a git branch VV and then you can see like my meta branch is looking to Oculus's 427 meta fork. And same thing with my uh, Android fix, it's 22 ahead of the meta fork but it's still upstream looking to the meta fork and uh the 427 branch so if you look here epic fork is my thing that's my fork of epics upstream epic upstream is epics thing and then meta fork is the meta brand uh the meta repo so that's the that the naming convention that i kind of follow um but yeah you just run that command to add them and then you would pull from meta's fork off a branch name you want and then you would push that into your epic fork if you try to use like the little helpers over here like here you go commit and all this kind of stuff visual studio code can be a little flaky it's going to yell at you and it's going to be like oh you can't push to a read-only repo yada 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 um you're gonna have to explicitly type in like a push command like this get push epic fork meta brand. like you're gonna have to let it know explicitly where you're trying to push um, otherwise it's not going to know where to go. So if you're trying to run it through this command over here, just read your output and it'll help you understand what's going wrong. Um, so that's one hint. Um, the other thing I want to mention is like, let's clear this out. Um, if you're ever in need of, um, like if you work all the time within a repo and you're switching between branches and you've done things like installed your prerequisites and done your setup that bat. And again, this is another section of the video where I'm assuming you guys are familiar with working with Visual Studio and you've built out the engine, etc. If y'all want a video like that, let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to do it. But, um, and I do have one that kind of briefly goes over like a new UE5 or UE427 setup with Visual Studio. Um, but yeah, always happy to go into more detail. But if you swap between branches frequently and you want to get back to like the clean repo state and you want to get rid of your binaries, intermediates, anything that's been added in, any extra installs, etc., do this get clean FDX. It'll, it'll get rid of everything outside of what's in the remote repo and then do another get pull force just to make sure you have everything in that repo and then you can run your setup. Um, most people are, I don't want to say most people in the past i would duplicate the directory that way i would have multiple different versions of the engine but unreal engine is freaking huge man and now i find it much easier to just use this clean command when i'm switching branches and building um and most of the time it's for diffs anyway so i'm not having to do that process a lot until i want to actually create a reproduction of a bug or something um the other thing too I need to make note of is I, I don't use Visual Studio Code for C++ like when I'm coding. This is primarily for handling source control and doing diffs and code comparison, etc. When I'm coding, I'm usually 
in Visual Studio with VS Code open used as a source of referencing like different forks or different cherry picks or different things that have come in. So like I'll be coding in Visual Studio doing some stuff and then when I get ready to push, I'll open that in code, look at the changes that show up over here on the left hand side under the source control, and I'll just use that to push up to my branches. Um, but I use live coding and I use like um, hot reload and I'm usually in Visual Studio just because it's it's great. It's the tool that does that job really well. Um, so yeah, there is a difference there. You you manage your projects in a project get what it's on get ignore. You manage your engine in an engine folder, its own repo, and it has its own get ignore. Um, you know, so just kind of clarify that. Um, some projects I use per force of plastic, but I have gotten more to where I'm leaning more on C++ lately and Git works great for that it's it's pretty amazing but um yeah outside of that that's the gist of things um i do want to thank you know the individual that asked this question um because when i'm dealing with stuff like this on a day-by-day -day basis i don't i don't think whoa this would make an awesome video or this would make good content so i really appreciate the question um hit that like and subscribe button by the way and i do want to say thanks to all the discord members and patreon members um out there um until next time happy developing and toodles